Hey everybody, Hunter here. Today I wanted to talk about server actions and I want to give a real life example of how server actions work with a form. So I have a website here, um, just a little demo app I'm throwing around and I will get into the code real quick. So this app is built with Supabase as the database and it's using Next.js and the new app router and as you can see here under app account I'm on the account page this is where we are fetching the data from the Superbase uh, database and we're getting this on the server side so this is all server side code here where we await Superbase we get the full name username website and the avatar URL from the user ID and then we pass we do a little destructuring here and then we pass all this stuff into this edit account uh, component and this edit account component right now it's a uh, client side component because we want to do like a little editing typing uh, and we need some use state for that to work so it needs to be a, a client side component instead of a server side component and this is what it looks like right here. This is the name, the email address. You can't really change. Um, that's just part of the app, but you can change like the username. So if I want to change the name to Hunter, let me open up a network tab over here. Um, all right, so I have the network tab open. I'm going to put it next to our name and I'm going to update it to Hunter. Okay, so as you can see, there is a fetch happening on the, on the client side right now. And I updated the profile to Hunter. And then I'll kind of reload the page real quick. Um, so this is currently happening on the client side. What I wanted to do is use the server actions to do the form update on the server side and server actions are experimental right now you have to opt into it so this may change in the future uh, they have some examples of going on uh, going on here on the next JS docs and I'm also going based off for the uh, the super base docs over here on how to do some server actions to update a form you can kind of copy this or you can copy one of the examples from in here um, but I'm using Superbase so it may be easier for me to copy the Superbase example and I can comment that out alright so the first thing you notice is this use server and this is going to tell, tell um, next that it's a server side action and then it's going to do some super base stuff. Uh, this is pretty specific to super base right now, but the same idea applies if you're working with some other uh, database helpers that lets you talk to database. So using something like a Prisma, this would be replaced with Prisma and stuff like that. So we comment this out and update profile would go on this form here still instead of on submit this would be an action and then this is going to be a problem having use server inside of a use client but I can show you what happens later now I'm going to copy some code from over here because we don't really have a title but we do have all these other fields that I'm getting. So I'm getting full name. So you get the form data that gets passed in. So when you do the action down here on the form, it's going to pass in form data. And then the inputs, like it's going to read it off the name. So I have a full name. Then the email address, I can't really edit. So I have it disabled right now. And then I have the username. And then I have a website. Um, so those are the things I have available on the form data. And then I have the create server actions. 
and I don't really have a type for my database generated so I'm going to get rid of that I'm going to import some of this stuff so this is just uh, some stuff from Next.js and it's going to complain because I'm using this in the use client I just want to show you what happens and then to actually do the super base update we're going to want to do something like this I'll wait super base and then the revalidate path is going to be once this updates it's going to bust the cache on this path which is a, which is the slash account path so if I go ahead and save this and go back to the app it's gonna say hey, I don't like this okay so that's one of the problems so what can we do so that we can have server-side stuff server-side uh, actions run on here well what we can do is go into the folder that we're under so I kind of right next to where the page is I'm going to make a new file called actions.ts and I'm going to copy and paste everything that I just did into here I'm going to do an export and then I can effectively delete this and then I'll copy all this stuff so this is how you can kind of start mixing together your server side actions with your client components save this um, so I don't have update profile right now but I can import it from up here from actions all right So now, update profile is being used as the action, but we kind of have another problem here, is we need this user ID because uh, we need to know which user to update in the database, and all we have is this form data, but we can kind of do a user ID, and it should be a string here but how do we get this user ID into this update profile uh, we kind of need to make another function and just call it call it on submit okay and then this will have the form data And then instead of calling update profile here we're gonna do it here pass in the form data and now we can pass in the user ID and then it needs user ID here and then if I go to pass this in should be fine it's saying this is undefined I think user ID is not optional so I'm going to get rid of that question mark and I did mean user ID thank you all right so that should work now and I will have everything working on this side of the equation so now instead of doing it Oh, I actually can move this to the top of this file okay so now we're doing a server action inside of a client component and then let us see what happens now so if I go back to the page and do a reload I'm going to see code pushy and then just do it twice right if I update it maybe I'll, you don't really see any feedback or anything but if you reload the page you can see that the name and the website indeed has changed so 
right? So if I open it, open a new tab, even this has this has updated. So if I can go back to Hunter again, update. See, it kind of did a little flash, and then this has updated, right? So we know the server action is working, but we kind of want a little uh, UI that says it's updated or something like that. Now, how do we do that part? Well, if we go back into our actions, we can do something like a try catch to catch an error. So we can put this part. So if it's a success, we can return something like a message. And you can kind of return whatever you want. And if there's an error, you can say there's an error. Okay. So now we're going to get some sort of some sort of response um, on here. So now we need to do something like a await on here. This will be a sync. And then this is going to be Now give us back the response if we do at console. All right, so now we're going to await that server uh, action. And then we can see what happens now. So if we go back here, we clear out some of this stuff. All right, so want to do it back to back more so it's going to do the server action so the server action on the form is going to be a post request as you can see here and now you can see here the response is a success right so now based on this response we can go back in and uh, we can kind of say, okay, if response, we can do like a if response that message equals, you know, success, then have a toast pop up or something like that. And yeah, that's all I wanted to share. That is an example of integrating server actions into a client side component on the Next.js app router. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks.